This is lesson 831a. We're going to be dividing a polynomial using polynomial long division. And so today's objective, we're going to divide a polynomial. Whenever we had a polynomial, it was already factored. And you saw it in forms like x minus 2 squared times x plus 5 to the fourth times x minus 3. And that's when you guys went through and you found the y-intercept and you found the zeros with its multiplicity, et cetera, et cetera, right? And the end behavior. And that's how we were able to graph a polynomial. Now, this is in factored form. It's completely factored. But what if I asked you, okay, here is a non-factored polynomial. How do I find the zeros of that? Now, we kind of already kind of know how to do some of it. I mean, you set it equal to zero, right? But then it's still, how, how do we factor that? And so we don't have any factoring techniques to factor a polynomial when it's bigger than uh, two. Like we know how to factor a quadratic equation, but a cubic, we don't really have the tools yet. We can graph it, right? So we, we know that we can graph it and we can look at where it crosses the x-axis and that can help us out but that's still how, how do you find that so we need to change the way that our brain kinda of thinks about division and so we need to know polynomial division to be able to factor that and you're probably wondering well why do I need to know division to be able to factor a polynomial well, let's think of this if I have the number 10 what are some factor what what are the factors of 10 if I were to factor that? Well, you'd probably say okay, 2 times 5. Well, some of you probably did 10 divided by 2 is 5, 2 and 5. Right? And so we use division as a tool to be able to factor that. And so that's why we need to know how to divide a polynomial is because that's going to be a tool that we could use to be able to factor our polynomial. And so this is just the definition of polynomial division. I don't need you to get it down, but it just says essentially that if we divide a polynomial, we can actually divide it by another polynomial. And it allows us to write it as factors with some sort of remainder. Now it is awkward. It is awkward because we, we're not used to writing it as factors. But through this process, where over the next few lessons, where we're going to be practicing these division techniques, it's going to help us and it's going to make a little bit more sense. So the process of polynomial long division. We first we need to set up the problem. And if you look at that, you're probably thinking, wait, I, I think I've seen something like that before, and you're absolutely right. This is just like regular old division except we're using abstract variables. So you set up the problem, right? You're dividing by this value, so that goes there. You take that and you put it inside the little half box thing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this first term into this first term here. And if that's kinda weird to think about, that's basically what we're doing when I say divide. So I'm dividing that into x cubed. Now when you do that, you're going to get x squared. And we put that on top. Then we distribute this number, or this value here, with both of these values, and we put it under the corresponding value. So for example, x squared times x gives me x cubed. Well, I'm going to put that under the x cubed. x squared times negative 3, I'm going to put that under the x squared, because it's x squared. x squared times negative 3 gives me negative 3x squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract. So if I'm going to subtract, that means that that negative does get distributed, which means negative positive. And so when we go through and we subtract that, I'll kind of erase that part there. What ends up happening is the x cubes cancel out and then 2x squared 
plus 3x squared gives me 5x squared. Now you're probably wondering now, you're like, okay, this is, this is kind of familiar. And it should feel familiar. And we've, we've essentially kind of already did this before just with numbers. If I said divide 4 into 820, well, the first thing we did is we divided this number into this number. 4 goes into 8 two times. Then we multiplied. Then we subtracted. And then now you're probably thinking, oh, I got to bring down that 2. Well, guess what? I got to bring down that negative 13. And then we repeat the process again. x goes into 5x squared. So you want to divide that. And that's going to give me 5x. Then we multiply. So 5x squared and negative 15x. Then we subtract. So if that minus distributes, which it's going to do, that will give me a minus 5x squared. And that will give me a positive 15x. So those will cancel out. And then I'm left with 2x. Bring in the next value. x goes into 2x twice. Distribute the 2. So I get 2x. Distribute the 2. Negative 6. Subtract. So then that distributes. And then that cancels out and that cancels out. And so your remainder is going to be 0. And so this is my answer. And if I wanted to write it as it's factored, I can now write it as x squared plus 5x plus 2 times x minus 3. And so that's what this equals. So doing just straight division, it's this. But if I wanted to write this now as a factored form, so this value right here, if I wanted to write that as factored form, I would write it like this, which is going to be this value here. And then whatever I divided by goes here. Now, you can only write it like, at like in that factored form when the remainder is 0. Okay, So that's really important. So the first thing I did, set up the problem. Then divide the first term into the first term. So I did x into x cubed. Put that value on top. Then I distributed that value with both of those values. And I wrote it under the correct terms. Subtract. So change the signs. And then do your, you know, add straight down, 0, add straight down. And then you just repeat the steps over again. Let's look at another one. So this is our second example. So first thing we need to do is we need to set it up. So setting it up, the x cubed minus x squared plus 1. And then on the inside, negative x to the fifth. Now, I didn't talk about this before in the previous example. But in this example, and you're going to see this in general when we divide with polynomials, not only do we write it in descending order, but we have to put placeholders. So if you notice, there is no x to the fourth. So if you notice what's on top here, there is no x to the fourth and there's no x squared. So I have to put placeholders for that. So I'm going to say plus 0x to the fourth and then I have the plus 7x cubed plus 0x squared and then now the minus x. Now the reason why we do that is because you're going to see as we divide there might be a time where when we divide, I get an x to the fourth. Well, where do you put it? Well, if you didn't put a placeholder, you're not going to be able to set it anywhere, basically. And so that's why we put the placeholder there. All right, so we set up the problem. Now we divide the first term into the first term. So x to the third, how does that go into negative x to the fifth? So that's going to give me negative x squared. Then we distribute. So x negative x squared times x to the third, so minus x to the fifth. Negative x squared times negative x squared. Well, that gives me a positive x to the fourth. See, I needed a place to put it, so that's why I put the placeholder. 
and then negative x squared times 1, that gives me a minus x squared. So now I need to subtract. So subtract, right? That means I change, you have to distribute the negatives, so all the signs change. That's a plus, that's a minus, and that's a plus. So then adding 0 minus x to the fourth, that brings all the way down, so plus 7x to the third, plus x squared, and I'll just bring everything down. Now typically, I know in the other example I didn't do that, but I like bringing everything down. So now we repeat it. So divide them. So this goes into this, so negative x to the fourth and x to the third. That's minus x times. So now distribute negative x times x to the third, negative x times negative x squared. So that's going to be a positive x to the third. Negative x times negative or positive 1, that's going to give me negative x. Then subtract. So minus, so that's going to turn plus, that's going to turn minus, and that's going to turn plus because if you distribute it, so 0, 7 minus x is 6, x squared, and that cancels out. <clears throat> so now we divide again. So x cubed goes into 6x cubed. That's going to be 6 times. So multiply that through. 6 times x cubed, 6 times negative x squared, 6 times 1, uh, I didn't put a, a placeholder for here, so I'm going to bring that down. So that's going to be 6. And then subtract. So minus plus minus. So that's going to be a 0. That's going to be 7x squared. And that's going to be a minus 6. So this right here, this is my remainder right because it didn't go to zero so that's going to be my remainder x cubed doesn't go into 7x squared evenly so we're done so now I can write my answer so my answer is going to be negative x squared minus x plus 6 that's what this is and then my now are my remainder so plus we're gonna say whatever my remainder is 7x squared minus 6 divided by whatever we divided by. So and that's going to be my answer. Same process. So I'm going to go a little faster this time. So x goes into 3x to the fourth, 3x cubed. Distribute. Subtract. So that means you change the sign minus plus. So when these add straight down, you get 0 negative 10 plus 6x is negative 4x cubed. You can bring down the next term. Now you could bring down all of them if you want. I typically bring down all of them. Some people just like bringing down the next one. The reason why I like to bring down all of them is because if this changes, like let's say this is longer, you're going to need more of these down there. And so I usually just bring them all down just because. So repeat. x goes into minus 4x cubed, negative 4x squared times. Distribute. subtract so that negative distributes so that'll become a positive and that'll become a negative so subtracting that's going to cancel and then 12x minus 8x is 4x squared bring down the next value divide so this value into this value now if you need to write it out write it out right that reduces into 4x now distribute 4x times x gives me 4x squared 4x times negative 2 gives me minus 8x. Subtract. Distribute the sign. So that'll cancel out. That'll turn into a positive 8. So negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7. Bring down the next value. x goes into negative 7x, negative 7 times. Distribute. Distribute. Subtract. So that turns into a positive, which is 0. That turns into a negative, so you get negative 8. So this right here is my remainder. And so 
we're going to say minus 8 over what we divided by. And that's going to be our result. Now I don't need you guys to do this one. I want you guys to try this one on your own. And you can compare with what we have here. So what did we learn today? Well, we talked about polynomial long division. And polynomial long division is basically just like regular division, except we're dividing with polynomials.